A flag was left behind by the Apollo 11 crew after they touched down on the moon. They tried for a while to affix it to the lunar surface, and NASA has video of the effort. Taking a triumphant bow in front of the first American flag raised on the moon, for instance, is Buzz Aldrin it was on July 21, 1969. In reality, flags were raised to mark each lunar landing. Yet it seems that humanity have left more than just flags behind on the surface of our satellite. On the moon there are, for instance, 96 bags of human garbage in total, along with photographs, human ashes, a little art gallery, a feather, a hammer, a few golf balls, rovers, and reflectors. These human remains will always be present on the same patch of moon land. Until an asteroid strikes them or we decide to bring them back to Earth to observe how their stay on the moon has affected them. Nonetheless, some continue to assert that we have never visited the moon. What will they say if they learn that we can take photos of the flags on the lunar surface directly? Would they have a change of heart? Follow along in this video to learn more about the most compelling evidence for the moon landings and other topics. So be sure to pick a night with clear skies, grab your telescope, and head outside to try and see the American flag on our beloved satellite. Oh, friend, awful news. You won't be able to find what you're looking for, I'm sorry. Sure, the flag is still on the moon, but a telescope won't let you see it. Not because your telescope is too ineffective either. Even our largest telescopes, like the 10.4M diameter Grand Telescopio Canarius, GTC, in Spain, are unable to complete the task. The flag is 125 centimeters long, and to see it, you would need an optical telescope with a focal length of almost 200 meters. Nevertheless, even the Hubble Space Telescope would not be able to view the stars and stripes because of poor sight caused by the atmosphere. The enormous lunar rover, which measures 3.1 meters in length, would be visible to us if we possessed a telescope with a diameter of 75 meters. However, the flag is just 125 centimeters long. Really, I'm sorry. No action is possible. Until we send a telescope to the moon, that is. The lunar flag on the surface would be seen if we were able to place a telescope in orbit around the moon and if the Apollo landing actually took place. Look at the black area in the zoomed-in square. That is our adorable little American flag. LRO, also referred to as the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, took this photo. The main objective of the LRO mission was to create a 3D map of the lunar surface from lunar polar orbit as part of a high-resolution mapping program to locate landing sites and potential resources, assess the radiation environment, and demonstrate new technologies in advance of future automated and manned missions to the lunar surface. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter traveled from the Earth to the Moon for four and a half days before entering orbit around the Moon on June 23, 2009. The spacecraft was pointed in the direction of the moon when it was launched. The spacecraft had to be corrected mid-flight in order for it to reach the lunar orbit properly. After the spacecraft arrived at the, its rocket motor was ignited to cause the moon's gravity to pull it into an elliptical lunar orbit. LRO was able to transmit back some lovely images of the moon's surface, among other things. Images of the astronauts' landing locations also exist. The American flags that the Apollo astronauts left behind on the moon are still standing, according to photos acquired by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, with the exception of the Apollo 11 mission, which Buzz Aldrin claimed had its flag knocked over by engine exhaust as it took off. How can we know that what we see is the shadow of the flag and not a lunar crater, though? Thus, by examining images of the Apollo landing sites taken at various times of the day, researchers have seen shadows revolving around the areas where the flags are supposed to have been. The shadows are plainly seen in videos on the internet that are easily found. Subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about the lunar flags. We're about to present you with the further, most compelling evidence of a lunar landing. 
but not everything is about flags. The lunar rover's traces and the final footprints on the moon are both plainly discernible at the Apollo 17 site. The photographs also show the locations of several of the scientific tools that the astronauts used to gain the first understanding of the moon's environment and interior. So, yes, we have visited the moon. The moon landings actually happened. What additional evidence do we really need? I mean, we can see the footprints, the flag, and the rover. Maybe we just need more pictures then. Maybe we all need a refresher course on the kind of sacrifices that were required to complete our mission to the moon. All of the images from the 12 Apollo missions that succeeded have been made available by NASA on a publicly accessible Flickr photo stream and are organized into amazing albums by mission. This telephoto shot from the Apollo 8 spacecraft shows the Earth rising roughly 5 degrees over the lunar horizon. It was stolen directly from this gallery. If the images are insufficient, we also have instruments. During the Apollo missions, astronauts took up a significant amount of scientific equipment and set it up on the lunar surface. In order to analyze the environment and give a clear picture of this unheard-before expedition, a number of seismic sensors, scientific experiments, and apparatus were transported to the lunar surface. Five seismometers from the Apollo missions continued to reliably relay data back to Earth until 1977, while the astronauts' Apollo 11 Lunar Surface Laser Ranging Retroreflector Array is still operational and measuring the Earth-Moon distance with astounding accuracy. The round-trip time of laser light pulses traveling at the speed of light, which are reflected back to Earth by the Moon's surface or by one of the five retroreflectors placed on the Moon during the Apollo mission, is used by astronomers to calculate this distance. Also, data has been collected from this far-off celestial body by other studies, including the Solar Wind Composition Experiment, the Lunar Seismic Profiling Experiment, and the Lunar Dust Detector, with results that are more than satisfactory. The data gathered during the studies, in my opinion, is compelling evidence of the moon landing. If we didn't leave a seismometer on the moon's surface, how might we measure seismic activity there? So, it appears that the lunar trip was not a fraud or a plot, despite the initial skepticism of many regarding humanity's ability to reach such a large and magnificent location. The Apollo program's success is still attested to by the data gathered throughout the trials, as well as by the exquisite photographs of the landing sites. But we also brought samples back, and we learned a lot about the geology of the moon as a result. If someone invited you to touch, smell, or even lick a sample of lunar dirt, I guarantee you wouldn't hesitate. Scientists are no different, unfortunately. They were overjoyed to finally obtain some genuine lunar rocks in the middle of the 1970s. The Apollo expedition had finally arrived and gathered enough data to make groundbreaking discoveries after decades of observing the moon through telescopes. The crew's recovery of lunar rocks from the moon's surface, however, was the true prize. Scientists quickly started examining them to discover more about the moon's physical characteristics. The outcomes were astounding. Oxygen, silicon, and iron were found in the rock samples, as well as a number of additional elements that are invisible to telescopes on Earth. This helped researchers better comprehend the makeup of the moon's surface. I'm sure the analysis had its share of humorous moments. If I were a scientist, you'd probably catch me nibbling on a chunk of lunar rock because I'd be itching to taste it. Anyway, since that time, study of lunar rock samples has been crucial to comprehending the creation and evolution of our moon. One thing, however, remains true. I shall always imagine eating the delectable lunar soil whenever I come across a talk on the lunar samples. We have a wealth of evidence showing that humans are capable of traveling to the moon thanks to the remnants of the Apollo missions that have survived on the lunar surface, including flags, footprints, scientific experiments, photos, and samples. The evidence from these missions is still visible and observable today on the surface of the moon, serving as a constant reminder of the bravery and accomplishments of the space pioneers as well as the numerous achievements made by the Apollo space program. 
The Apollo missions continue to be a living example that, when we work together, nothing is impossible, even if you can't see the flag through a telescope. We appreciate you watching this video. Do you want to hear anything else? Tell us in the comments section below and I'll see you next time on the channel.